The City of Detroit is releasing into the Uplands metaverse this week. These are my collection predictions for the release. How's it going everybody? This is Radish Head and welcome back to another episode of Upland Analysis. I want to start off by saying that this episode is proudly sponsored by Ultra Premium, 12 East 87th Street, Manhattan. If you want to become a power seller of NFLPA Legits, reach out to BigNick23 on Discord. So, the city of Detroit. It actually gets a little bit of a bad rap from uh, a lot of people who don't really understand what it's all about. And of course, uh, Detroit has had a bit of a tragic story in the last few decades. Um, it's seen, you know, a lot of post-industrial decline after the, the fall of the car industry in the United States. But that isn't all there is to the story of Detroit. And as I have been researching the different neighbourhoods and the history of the of the city... Um, I am convinced that it is going to be a really interesting city to speculate in. There are a lot of fantastic neighbourhoods, a lot of really interesting properties to grab in Detroit. So what I'm going to be doing here, obviously the neighbourhood boundaries haven't been released yet. So I can't guarantee that the neighbourhood boundary lines that I've been using, which is this website here, the Interactive District Map of Detroit. I think that the neighbourhood boundaries are going to be pretty similar, if not identical to this, but obviously nothing's guaranteed. Um, Upland have their own, <laughs> however they decide to do it. I know we've had some weird ones before, like Nashville. I'm hoping that Detroit is going to be something more similar to what we see on this website here. Also, uh, I have to put in my usual disclaimer for all of my collection predictions. This is merely my opinion, Based on my own research, I am not part of the Uplands team and I've never had any contact with anybody on the Upland team in regards to collections or, or anything behind the scenes like that. Do your own research. I cannot guarantee that any of these are going to be collections, but I think that uh, these are really good predictions uh, based on my own understanding of how Upland works and the best bits of Detroit. So... Let me get started, and as uh, this website here actually has uh, neighbourhood boundaries and the regular Upland map does not, uh, for the most part I'm going to be using this map when I'm talking through my predictions. And I'm going to start with the sort of southern river side area of Detroit, because as you can imagine, um, there is quite a lot of areas of interest around that area. But that isn't the only area of interest, and I'll go into that later on in the video. Obviously, one area which people are always going to be speculating on, and I imagine these bits are going to sell out pretty quickly, is this downtown Detroit area. Obviously, downtown Los Angeles didn't make it as a collection. I did predict it would, but downtown Detroit, I think it's got as good a chance as any other downtown, which is pretty high. And, uh, you know, even if it doesn't make it as a collection, um, you can resell your, your downtown properties for a pretty good profit before the collection reveal um, if you want to do that. As with all downtown areas, a lot of the biggest and best of the commercial world is in the downtown area. And it's also right on the riverfront. And a lot of these areas which are on the riverfront are particularly important to Detroit uh, because of its history as a you know, a key commercial city. And for similar reasons, um, I'm saying downtown Detroit, possible collection. Rivertown is also a possible collection. Um, and specifically, this riverfront area. Now, there isn't a, um, there isn't a riverfront street, but it is kind of a tourist destination. If you type Detroit to Riverwalk, you'll see that it's made up of three or four streets um, along the front here. And if I go back to this map, um, the downtown section of it, this East Atwater Street over here is quite a significant bit of the River Walk. Uh, so that's a recently rejuvenated bit. So that goes through um, downtown and river town. Also on the topic of rejuvenation, um, this Midtown area over here, um, 
Until recently, it was a bit of a deprived area, lots of people moving out of this part of the city. But more recently, that's had a lot of money pumped into it. It's got a lot of shops um, and, and places to eat. And we've seen, and this has come up time and time again on Upland collection reveals, Upland like any area that's got some kind of modern commercial significance to it. If you can shop there, um, there's a good bet that <laughs> Upland is, is going to value it quite highly. It's something that I've noticed. Now, you know that I'm a big fan of small neighbourhoods. Whenever I'm thinking about areas to buy in Upland, I like areas that I might be able to resell for a good amount, even if there is no collection there. I want places which are legitimately interesting and uh, in high demand. And obviously, the smaller the supply, the higher the demand. And I just cannot ignore Greek Town. One, it's in a fantastic location. It's right in downtown uh, Detroit. And it's tiny. Like, to me, this just screams a like a rare collection. Upland's quite like the, uh, the neighbourhoods which are named after immigrant communities that have moved into a city. We've already had a Greek town collection in Chicago, which I'm not sure if that helps or hinders it. But certainly, um, Greek town in Detroit is going to sell out pretty much immediately, I imagine. So you've got to be quick on the draw if you want to be part of the Greek town community in Detroit. But it looks really promising to me. And a little bit further west along this river... Uh, we've got a couple of other immigrant communities, uh, which I think are worth flagging up. We've got Cork Town, which uh, for those of you who aren't aware, Cork is a town in Ireland. And this is kind of the Irish-American uh, historical community of Detroit, which I don't believe has been done before. So um, if you want to speculate on that kind of theme and um, you're thinking it's something a little bit different, which Upland haven't done before, then Cork Town could be an interesting place to speculate on. It also has uh, Michigan Avenue running straight through it. And I'll go through that in more detail later when I go through my uh, my street predictions. But uh, Michigan Avenue is an absolutely iconic street. It's a major, major um, thoroughfare uh, for Detroit. So the fact that it has that running straight through it as well as downtown, I, I think geographically uh, Corktown has a lot of potential. And while we're on the topic of immigrant communities towards the riverside of Detroit, look at this. We've got Mexican Town. That's something which has never been done before. And it's a very small neighbourhood. Small neighbourhood, immigrant community, something different and unique to Detroit. Mexican Town. Yeah, I, I can feel that. I can imagine that as a potential collection as well. But in general, any of this stuff just surrounding downtown and anything along the riverfront here, um, I think they have a real shot at being a collection. The properties in downtown Detroit, in Rivertown, in Midtown, they're a little bit more expensive. Going up into the Gold Coast, you know, Gold Coast, we had a Chicago collection for that as well. So maybe not in Detroit, but this whole area along here, that's the Riverwalk. It's, um, it's been developed, had a lot of money pumped into it. Uh, so I don't think you can really go wrong over there. And while we're in this eastern riverfront section of Detroit, the other area that I really want to flag up, two more very small neighbourhoods um, right next to each other. We've got West Village and we've got Indian Village. Both of these actually uh, share quite a lot of similarities in terms of why I'm picking them for my collection predictions video. They're small. They've got really interesting architecture. If you look up um, like West Village, Detroit, there's a lot of lovely mansions, which is really quite interesting considering how close it is to downtown and the river. Um, extremely exclusive parts of the city historically. And just the architecture is really cool. You've got Tudor Revival stuff. You've got Queen Anne style mansions, Georgian Revival loads of really cool stuff and they're all um, kind of uniquely set back from the pavement as well so you've got this lovely green area in front of all the houses and you've got the big mansions behind so that's all in West Village 
And then in Indian Village, it's kind of a similar story, except when I did my research on Indian Village, there's actually loads of unique, special, notable buildings. Look, this is the Wikipedia article for, um, for Indian Village, Detroit. Look at this. The, this is, there's a whole section on notable buildings. And look how great they look. Like this is this is kind of typical of this part of Detroit, and you thought it was all just run down, boarded up houses. It's not. So honestly, have a look through this Wikipedia page because if you grab one of them, you're going to be able to sell them for a pretty good amount. I think these these are absolutely beautiful mansions, and the fact that Indian Village has so many of them. I think that's pretty bullish on that becoming uh, something of significance, even if it's not a collection. That just screams like a good node to me. Uh, so, yeah, West Village and Indian Village is my other prediction for this side of Detroit. So that's what I've got to say about the uh, the southern part of Detroit. As expected, a lot of the stuff around downtown, it's had a lot of money pumped into it recently. It's iconically commercial, got a lot of great history. Um, it is well worth investing in that part of the city, in my opinion. But that is not the only bit of note about Detroit. And I'm going to show you some bits a bit further out, which I think are absolutely worth speculating in. But before I jump into that, I once again want to thank Ultra Premium 12 East 87th Street Manhattan for sponsoring this video. Right, let's move a little bit further afield from downtown, because I bet a lot of you are thinking, OK, Radish, fair enough, like downtown, that's nice in every city, uh, Detroit included. But there is actually a whole section up in this northern area of the city, which is even more pleasant. And here it is. I'm just going to zoom in here. Actually, I'm going to zoom out first of all, so you can see whereabouts in the city I'm talking about. It's actually right like bang in the like north center of the city and I was blown away when I was doing my research on the different neighborhoods um I think I've zoomed into the right neighborhood here here we go right this bit here is where you want to be and I know that Detroit is going to be 70% fair start agreement however a lot of the areas which I'm putting in in my collection predictions are some of the more expensive parts of the city. So what I'm thinking Upland have done here is the vast majority of the city is going to be FSA, but that's all going to be the really cheap bits so that people can join the game, get their free upics and mint a bunch of cheap stuff. However, most of the collections are in more expensive areas. So downtown and the surrounding areas, which are obviously more expensive. In real life, they're about $200,000, $300,000 instead of like $50,000 in other parts of the city. And this bit up here, Palmer Woods, the average price of a house here is like $600,000, $700,000. So there's not going to be many FSAs up here. And I think um, Upland might have a really clever strategy here where there's going to be almost like two tiers of Detroit. There's going to be the majority of it, which is cheap and FSA. And then there's going to be a smaller couple of sections, the downtown section and this Palmer Woods Sherman Sherwood Forest bit up here, which is going to be more expensive, smaller numbers, but more likely to be a collection. That's my take on what Upland is doing for this release. It'll be really interesting to see if it plays out. Palmer Woods, look it up. Honestly, barely any streets. Look how, look at this. This is actually like geographically quite a big neighborhood, but you can actually see the individual houses. I don't know if, if you're going to be able to see it on the screen, but the houses here are so big and so spaced apart. I can practically count the number of individual houses in this entire neighborhood. In fact, look at this little triangle bit here, uh, Argyle Crescent. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten houses in that entire like circular bit. Like, there's, there can only be like a couple of hundred houses up here. They're all expensive. This, this is an underrated gem. And I don't think a lot of people are aware that this whole bit of Detroit exists. It's a similar story in Sherwood Forest. You can just zoom in. It's not quite as exclusive as um, Palmer Woods. But again, 
Look, look at this Parkside Street. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten or eleven houses again in that entire circle. They're huge. They're spaced out. The architecture is absolutely beautiful. There's a lot of really interesting history there. We know from a uh, historical precedence that Upland like to have collections in areas like this. They did Riverdale in Bronx. There is definitely more examples that I can't think off the top of my head, but it, it does happen. Um, I think this has a really good shot at being something. So those are the two neighbourhoods in this area which really jumped out to me. Um, University District is just down the road. Um, Uplands, they quite like University District um, for collections. So uh, yeah, it's worth giving that a look. So that's kind of my other sort of neighbourhood bit, which I wanted to uh, call out as, as worth speculating on, is this kind of little section here in the north of the city. And that actually leads really well into my streets part of my prediction video. I've got a few streets and uh, two of them just happen to be um, around this area. So right on the top of Detroit, it makes up the entire northern border, is of course Eight Mile Road. I listened to Eminem's Eight Mile Road uh, just to get me hyped up for this uh, video. It's a fantastic song. It's a culturally significant border between Detroit and the outside world. I could absolutely see Eight Mile Road um, being a collection. I mean, lots and lots of people have heard of it. It's uh, It's got a lot of historical significance. Um, it's just a cool, cool name for a collection, Eight Mile Road. So I could totally see that um, potentially being a collection. And again, in, in a similar area so where I was talking about uh, Sherwood Forest and Palmer Woods, this street here, and it kind of intersects a lot of the neighbourhoods which I was uh, predicting on. And then when I saw that this street passes through Sherwood Forest, Bagley University District. It goes all the way down. It's called Livernoy Avenue. And I've just zoomed in on it here. So this is Sherwood Forest here. And then just on the border between that and Bagley, you've got this street. It's called Livernoy Avenue. It's known as the Avenue of Fashion. Um, there are so many shops along here. So it's a massively important avenue uh, in terms of commercials, which we've been seeing more and more Upland love that. But it's quite a long street and it looks like it ends up in Delray. So it doesn't go into downtown, but it's a long avenue, very important commercially. Um, it probably won't be like an exclusive collection or anything like that because it is quite long, but maybe a limited collection. And uh, that's always worth speculating on, in my opinion. Another street that I think is of significance, we're jumping back into downtown. Most of these streets that split off from this big, uh, like, circular junction area here um, are top of my list in terms of street predictions. And the one coming out of the north here, Woodward Avenue, is my number one, probably the most iconic street in Detroit. It's got a really rich history. It has loads of shops. It has mansions. Um, to be honest, anything which Woodward Avenue passes through, I think is worth uh, giving a look because sometimes Uplands quite like to do the double collections where you've got a big uh, street going through and then you also have some neighbourhoods along the way. So let's think about what it goes through. You've obviously got downtown, you've got midtown, and it keeps going up. Got Tech Town, which by the way is a really cool name for a neighbourhood. And it just keeps going up. Like it is, it is the most iconic street in Detroit, in my opinion. Um, people are going to be grabbing the whole stretch of Woodward Avenue, I think, pretty quickly. And because it actually goes through some of the cheaper neighbourhoods, quite a lot of it's going to be FSA. So if you're a new player and you're looking to uh, to grab something which could be a really nice collection, I think Woodward Avenue is a lot, has a lot of potential there. Bringing my map back down into downtown Detroit, this tiny street here, Monroe Street, could be, and I don't usually predict these, it could be an ultra rare. Um, when I was looking up iconic streets of Detroit, Monroe Street came up a few times. Apparently it's like the quintessential 
uh, Greek town street, which is kind of ironic because in here it looks like it's entirely contained within downtown Detroit, not Greek town. Um, maybe maybe Monroe Street kind of goes further into Greek town. I'm not sure, but certainly this bit, uh, Monroe Street. Uh, I had I had a look at some pictures of it. It looks really cool. Um, very very culturally unique, which is something which Chaplin like to do when they're doing their collections. So yeah, Monroe Street is is also a good one. Uh, so that's that's the second one that's coming out of this um, circular area of downtown Detroit. Um, you've got Cadillac Square as well, which is a really cool name for a street. I could absolutely imagine Upland doing a collection on that. And then coming west out of this, this is Michigan Avenue. There was loads and loads of people who were speculating on Michigan Avenue in Chicago being a collection. Well, it didn't make it, but... Maybe Michigan Avenue, Detroit could make it. Probably in terms of geographic importance, I think it might be the most important thoroughfare in Detroit. It just goes straight out of the city. And it, um, it's basically the connection from Detroit to other cities like Chicago. It's huge. So I was actually thinking, like collections aside, when Upland gets cars into the game and you're able to travel like between cities by driving i think owning properties on uh, michigan avenue in detroit could be a fantastic place to set up your car shop or your um, petrol station because people are going to have to probably travel um, to michigan avenue in order to go from detroit to chicago so uh, that could be worth speculating on if you're thinking more about the mid to long term future of Upland when people are driving around and there's real time travel mechanics in Upland. That would be really cool to uh, to buy some stuff on that street for that reason as well. And then, of course, I just want to do shout out a couple of other city wide um, collection things. There's two things which people really think about when they think of Detroit, and I'd be surprised if Uplands didn't include some kind of collection for one or both of these. The first one being Motortown. Detroit obviously has a hugely significant history as being the centre of United States automotive manufacturing. Um, I'd be very surprised if there wasn't some kind of motor city collection, something to do with factories or the houses of industrialists or, or something like that. And then in a similar vein, uh, the Motown genre of music, anything to do with Motown record labels or um, the, the houses of people who performed under that label or anything like that. So Motor City and Motown, two kind of city-wide collections, which I could totally see being like an ultra rare. They're going to be snapped up really, really quickly by people who have done their research and they're targeting very specific properties around the city. Um, so if you're into that, then I probably don't even need to tell you. <laughs> you've, you've probably already got your list written down, but um, I just wanted to flag that up as well to have a complete list. And that is my complete collection predictions for Detroit. I'm actually going to be out of the uh, out of the house uh, when this city releases. I'm not sure if I'm going to have a uh, internet connection or not. So I might have to skip this release, which is kind of frustrating because the more research I've done on Detroit, the more I like the look of it. Um, but everybody have a fantastic time speculating there. Once again, I want to thank Ultra Premium 12 East 87th Street Manhattan for sponsoring this video. And if you guys found this video helpful, I'd love it if you gave me a like. And if you want to see similar content to this in the future, it would be fantastic if you could subscribe. I'm aiming for 2,000 subscribers at the moment. We're so, so close. And I'm sure you'll have extra luck in the city reveal if you subscribe. I mean, what do you have to lose? And until next time, I'll see you then.